Hello and welcome to episode 79 of Stitched in Sweden. I'm Maria and you can find me on Ravelry and Instagram as Stitched in Sweden. I thought I would start out this week with one of my old segments called This Week in Stockholm and kind of try to reintroduce that to the podcast because I think um, some of you like that little update and why not? So this week in Stockholm was the last week of vacation for Thomas and I and we had three weeks of vacation this summer which we spent, um, well this last week we spent in Stockholm and the week before we visited some friends in the Netherlands and before that we actually went on a little trip to the west coast of Sweden to um, Gothenburg and the area just north of Gothenburg and had a little road trip which was really nice. Thomas and I don't often take trips together alone, if that makes sense. Most often times we are either with his family or going to visit my family. So it was really nice to have some time on a vacation um, with no other purpose than just having a nice vacation together. So, but this week in Stockholm it has been very warm. I think it's supposed to be a little bit cooler tomorrow. Um, we went to a wedding this past weekend and I wore a dress that I made, which I'll be sharing more about in the sewing section, um, but I thought I would start out today with sharing the knitting projects that I've been working on actually. I have one project that's in progress at the moment and that is a pair of socks. I'm knitting a pair of socks for a Christmas present. Um, they are these socks here. I finished the first one. And um, you probably, you may have seen this yarn before. Here's what the label looks like. This yarn was gifted to me by Isabel from Fluffy Fibers. And um, she sent it to me a while ago, but I am just knitting it with it now. I don't often knit with self-striping yarn anymore, even though when I first started knitting, that's basically all that I knit with was self-striping yarn knitting socks. Um, but since then, my taste has shifted and I tend to knit more with mostly solid yarns or just slightly speckled yarns. Um, but I really like the colors in this yarn. Uh, they're nice soft colors, pinks, grays, and I was just looking for a project to kind of rejuvenate my knitting mojo after a long project that I will show you next. Um, so these socks just seemed like the perfect kind of project to knit, uh, put a couple rows on every evening for watching a movie or something. Um, so I decided to guess them on. So there's no pattern in particular that I'm following for these socks. I cast on uh, 64 stitches and I'm knitting a 2x1 rib for the I knit that for the entire leg and then on the top part of the sock. It looks really long but it actually fits perfectly so I think um, with rib socks the leg often looks skinnier because it's scrunched in and then the foot also looks kind of funny because it's scrunched in only on half of the side so it ends up just looking kind of odd. Um, I did a uh, slip stitch heel flap for this and then I did a square heel turn actually which is not one that I usually do. I most often do a rounded heel turn but I thought I would give this a try um, and if it's really well so I'm happy with how that turned out and I'm currently 
on the second sock just did the first row of the heel flap and I'm super happy with my stripe matching this was from two different balls of the yarn and um, yeah I tried to start them at the same point and I think I pretty much nailed it so <laughs> really happy with that um, I'm knitting these on um, my Haya Hayas. These are fixed circular needles, size zero, which is a two millimeter needle. That is the needle that I pretty much always use for sock knitting now. When I started knitting socks in 2008, which is when I started knitting, when I started knitting, the first project that I did was to knit a sock because that's all I wanted to knit. And I knit that on US 2, which on the top of my head, I can't tell you what that is in millimeters, but anyway, two sizes bigger than this, zero. And I got a very similar gauge as I now do on zeros, so I guess my knitting has loosened quite substantially. But I think also I prefer a slightly tighter stitch especially when it comes to socks so yeah I think that these will be a really nice present um, and it's just kind of fun to knit on them now when I have the time so these this yarn is 75% virgin wool and 25% polyamide and here's the color in case you are interested So those have been just a fun, simple project that I have been working on lately. The project I was referring to before, which kind of drained my knitting mojo, is um, a blanket that I've been working on. And I, it, it's kind of harsh, I guess, to say that it drained my knitting mojo, but it was just a lot of knitting and so I was always working on this one project and I'm really happy with how it turned out. Um, it was fun to knit it but it's just really large so it took a long time and I didn't feel like I wanted to be knitting anything else at the same time because I wanted to start it and finish it and kind of be done with it um, in a relatively short period of time because it is a big project so this is I'm going to write the pattern for this um, it's a new design that I have made and here it is hopefully you can see it a bit uh, this is a textured baby blanket that I knit in 11 balls of Debbie Bliss Baby Cash Merino. Here's the tag for it. I used the color called Silver and um, this yarn is 125 meters for 50 grams. It's 55% wool, 33% acrylic, and 12% cashmere. I believe I knit this on a US 3, which is a 2.25 a 3.25 millimeter needle, but I would have to check that. But it will be in the pattern, of course. Here it is in its full size. Um, it's pretty large, but I wanted a blanket. It's quite large, uh, especially for a baby blanket, I would say, but I wanted a blanket which was a bit bigger than just a kind of car seat blanket or stroller blanket um, that could be used for a longer period of time and could be, uh, you know, put on the floor or... As like creating a little rug kind of 
thing. Yeah. Anyway, um, brain. So yeah, to tell you a little bit about this blanket, um, you can see that there's a pearl stitch texture pattern. It starts out with a nice large section of ribbing and there is a nice edging on the side. This is the back of it. You can see that this edge ribbing follows down and it creates a really nice smooth transition on the edge. So that is a feature that I really like about it. Um, as you can imagine, I guess part of the other reason I wanted to finish this kind of quickly was because I knew it was going to just be getting bigger and bigger and it summer was progressing so I started this I think around the end of May um, and I knew that it might be getting quite warm soon so I didn't really want to be knitting a blanket a wool blanket in the middle of the summer um, and have it on my lap so here it is when it's folded up. There's something so nice about folded knits. Um, so yes, that is the blanket. It doesn't have a name yet. If you have any suggestions, do tell me what you think. I hope to have that coming out pretty soon. And some of you will have seen on Instagram that um, Thomas and I are expecting our first baby in December and so today I'm actually 20 weeks pregnant and that blanket will be for our little girl. So that is extra exciting. I also made another little project for her, um, actually two small projects. One, one of the things that one of the symptoms of my pregnancy so far has been that I'm just out of breath all the time, which I guess is pretty normal. Um, but I'm extra out of breath when I'm trying to podcast, so there you go. Here is another project that I made. These sweet little ribbed socks I have made in the past, and these are uh, the newborn socks from, I, I don't actually remember exactly what they're called, but they are from Tabby, who is, who was Awesome Socks, now she uh, goes by her name, I believe, at least on Instagram, if not on Ravelry as well. Um, but they are called the Perfect Newborn Socks. Um, and yeah, it's a free pattern on Ravelry, there they are, super easy to follow. She gives instructions for both a, a ribbed sock like I made and for ones that has a little cable design, which I've knit in the past for a friend's baby. Um, so I thought I would make these and this is just a color that I really like. So. This yarn is um, Socks Yeah in the fingering weight, and I believe the color is Malachite. I knit these little socks after knitting a little sweater, which is a seed stitch sweat pullover sweater that I'm planning on potentially writing up into a pattern but I have not done so yet. This is just simple top-down raglan style sweater and I knit this in a newborn size because our baby will be born in December and it will be cold for probably the first six months of her life. She'll need a lot of warm things. Another knitting project I started this spring and knit till yeah, the beginning of summer is a shawl design which I mentioned on the podcast previously. And the shawl itself is 
the knitting is complete I still need to weave in the ends and I'm going to add some tassels um, the pattern writing is far from complete I am hoping to write it up soon I've started but some designs are much easier to knit for yourself uh, and when you try to write the pattern out it can be quite difficult to write it in a way that is easy for others to understand and in a way that doesn't take just a million pages because sometimes you do things for a certain row where you fudge it a little bit or um, just makes it difficult to write concise instructions clear and concise instructions but here is my shawl design my most recent shawl design that I'm like I said still working on writing and this uses yarn from Stress Knits yarn and this is her DK weight base in the color Palm Lines which is a really beautiful blush pink um, that is one of my favorite colors. I used two and a half skeins approximately to knit this and I will likely use most of the rest of the remaining skein for the tassels that I'm planning on putting on this shawl. So I'll stand up to give you a little bit of a better look and yeah as I said there are still some ends that need to be woven in but um, I'm really happy with how it turned out. Um, I'll take it off so you can see some of the details a little bit better. The first section is a stockinette section broken up by some purl stitches and then it transitions into this kind of cable-y, wavy looking section and then finally there's this textured section on the end before a pico bind off and I'm planning on having tassels on each of the three points because which of course would be optional if you are knitting it but I really like the way that tassels help weigh down a shawl when you have it when you're wearing it in that front style and I guess it would also help weigh it down if you were wearing it over your shoulders as well because you would have two tassels in the front and then one on the back um, but I like it particularly for front facing shawls um, because the tassels just keep the ends kind of in the same place and I think they also add a nice design feature so hopefully this will be written up shortly and I already have a few test knitters who are excited to start knitting this for me um, so I just need to get my act together and write up the pattern. I don't know if I've shared this before but in case I haven't I will because I really like this. My project bag that I've been using for smaller projects like the baby sweater and socks and then also the striped socks that I'm working on right now is this bag which my friend made and she is an excellent seamstress I go to her for all advice related to sewing she's also an excellent knitter um, but she has been sewing for a much longer time than I have and also for a longer time than she's been knitting so that's usually who I go to her for sewing advice but she made this bag for me, I believe it was for Christmas, I want to say. And I just really like it because it has a drawstring. I actually added the little um, clamp thing here. What is this called? You know, whatever this is. I added that, um, but it closes up like this. 
And this is actually the perfect project bag for plane rides because you can hook this on the front, the seat in front of you and then you have a little hole for your yarn to come out of so that the whole thing isn't flying out and it just keeps it really nice and contained and I also like that it has a square bottom because then it can just sit upright really nicely on counters and things or on the couch which is where mine usually lives and the inside is this cool triangular patterned fabric and it's just really well made because she is very careful with details when it comes to sewing. If you want to follow her on Instagram, her account there is in stitches knits. So definitely go and check her out. That's everything that I've been knitting on. I have a couple of yarns that I have gotten recently and one planned knitting project to talk about still. Um, yeah, I haven't been buying yarn very much at all lately, but when we went to the Netherlands, Thomas and I arrived on a Thursday and we weren't Thursday morning and we weren't going to be meeting up with my friends where we would be staying until after work for them on Thursday, so we had all day in Amsterdam to explore the city. And we actually visited them in March last year, and we went on a boat tour, and which is a really touristy thing to do, but it's really fun. I've also done a boat tour in Paris, which I thought I would never do, but it was a really fun way to see the city and you get a bit of a different perspective from the water. So when we went last time, we had been on the boat tour, so this time when we arrived at the central station in Amsterdam, we decided to um, go on a self-guided walking tour so that we would see the city from a different perspective, I guess. Last time, we also made a trip to um, Stephen and Penelope, the yarn store of Stephen West, but I didn't buy anything because I don't think I bought anything. Maybe I bought some stitch markers. Anyway, I was completely overwhelmed and I honestly just have not been buying that much yarn lately because I'm happy with my stash that I have and I'm happy with the size of it, which is just one shelf in my um, glass cabinet that I have here. Okay, it's like more like two shelves. It's one shelf of fresh new skeins and then I have another shelf that has um, yarns which are already balled up and partially used or balled up, cast on, ripped out, rewound up again. And then also a little box with um, smaller scraps. But other than that, I don't feel the need that I used to feel to buy large quantities and of yarn just to store it and hoard it, I guess. Uh, but this time I, at Stephen West's shop, I saw that he has his West Wool yarn, which I guess is his own brand. And I picked up one skein of Bicycle, which is the fingering weight um, maybe it's slightly thicker fingering weight because it says that there's 390 yards or 350 meters for 100 grams. Normally I would think there'd be around 400 meters for 100 grams if it was a, like a sock weight. So I would say this is, it looks like it could be about a fingering or if you knit it on thicker needles, maybe it could lean towards a sport. This color is Roswitha. I should have asked, um, the lady who helped me in the shop told me that this particular color was named after her, so I should have asked her to how she pronounced her name. There's the color name, and it is 10% textile, not sure, maybe like some kind of recycled textiles, I'm not sure and 90% Falkland Merino. 
and I just like this color and I thought it could be perfect for a little mini sweater. This color spoke to me and I decided why not and I picked up one skein. While I was there I actually did some shopping for my friend who I was speaking about who sewed the bag for me and she is, I, I picked up um, five skeins for her in the DK weight yarn which is called Tandem. I really like the label so mine is Bicycle and this one's Tandem. So you can see the difference there. It's the same composition, the yarn structure looks very similar or the same, it's the same. Um, it's just that this is a bit thicker so this has 250 yards or 230 meters for 100 grams. This particular color is called Pebble and I think she's going to make a colorwork sweater because I got her two skeins of this gray and then three other colors. Um, I'll just show you them. <laughs> three other colors that I think she will use for the yoke of the sweater. And if I'm not mistaken, she's going to make one of um, Boylan Knitworks sweaters, but I don't remember which one. Yes, so she got, well, I got for her, uh, based on sending a lot of pictures back and forth, these three colors. So this really light pink is called Powder. This purpley, which is, it's actually a little bit more purple, less, like it's more of a, it has a bluer tone than what's showing up on the screen, and I have no idea how to say that. There it is. And then this turquoise is called Brackish. So that will be a sweater for her, I believe. And again, another one of the gray. Yeah, but this yarn is, is really nice. It's soft and squishy. I'm thinking of probably knitting one of um, Petite Knits sweaters for babies in this, probably in maybe a three to six month size or something, because I think this would be a really nice spring color sweater, which we still need pretty thick sweaters here in the spring, so I think that will be perfect. Um, other pink yarn. We are having a girl, but I I don't buy pink yarn just because it's going to be a girl, but because I really like the color. Um, yeah. This is a little uh, mini skein that I got from another knitting friend, and I have never tried uh, La Bienname yarn, and she uh, gave this to me recently in the color ballet. This is a 20 gram mini with 80 meters, so it's um single ply yarn. So I'm not sure exactly what I'm going to use this for yet, but I think it could either be a nice little pair of socks, um, the newborn socks, or I might incorporate this into a yoke of a sweater at some point because I have some other single ply which could be nice with it. I have these two which are already wound up and I think this could be. That's awkward. <laughs> I think this could be a nice combination. So we'll just have to see about that. But that is all that I have in terms of yarn that I purchased or received. In terms of knitting plans, I only have one project that is immediately planned, I guess, for when I'm finished with my rib socks that I'm working on. In general, I like to only have 
one project on the go at the at a time unless I have a complicated project on the needles and I also like to have a simple project. Um, there's a couple of projects that I have in various bags which are yeah not finished at the moment. Um, actually I can show you one that's kind of funny. Well, not really funny, it's just kind of kind of not finished. <laughs> this is why it's funny. Because this is how I see it when I look into my yarn cabinet. Um, this is a little knitted doll that I'm working on for my friend who had a baby last year year in September who lives in Oregon and it's oh this is the back this is the tail <laughs> there we go this is the front of a little doll and she's gonna have this it's gonna be a little puppy dog she has this cute little dress and her tummy is nice and squishy and round and I also put some like this little um, jersey fabric that I put on her paws, um, but she doesn't have a head. So that's why she lives upside down in my project bag and she really just needs a head. But, well, obviously she needs her dress finished too, but the head is kind of critical at this point. So that's where she stays. I may or may not work on that again soon. This is just a, a pattern that I'm improvising based on a, a doll that can be purchased. It's not a knitting pattern is what I mean to say. So I have a couple of projects that are in progress but have been hibernating, we could say, for a while and for some reason have lost my interest, hopefully only temporarily. Um, I'm also working on the Divide sweater from Emily Green and that's a sweater which I really want to have but I'm not going to be able to wear it this fall or winter and so yeah. I've just lost motivation on that. The plan that I do have is to use this yarn, which has been in my stash for a very long time. And this is some yarn that I think that my mom bought this yarn for me maybe one of the first years that I started knitting, 10 years ago, when she was on a trip in Italy or something and anyway it's a really nice soft yarn it's just 100% merino I have never really known quite what I want to do with it I really like the yarn it's a nice fingering weight um, a pretty light gray towards beigey color like a warmer light gray definitely still in the gray category though I've thought about using it as a lining for mittens when I've done color work mittens and sometimes I like to line them also um, to make them extra warm but that never happened and I just have this one 50 gram ball so today I was browsing Pinterest as you do and uh, thinking about baby outfits because I'll show you what I've been sewing lately, which, yeah, and I thought, oh, I saw some, um, ribbed tights, and that reminded me of a, a knitter who I follow on, on Instagram, um, Strickizilla, I think is her name, and she has really cute patterns for children. This is her... She has a lot of cute patterns for kids uh, and one of the patterns that she sells on Ravelry is a leggings pattern for 
yeah, it, it goes down at least to size one month, which is what I was interested in. So I don't remember exactly what the other sizes were, but um, I think the pattern is only available in Norwegian. I want to say Norwegian, potentially Danish, but okay, here. Yeah, they're just like these little ribbed baby uh, leggings, tights. I thought that these would be a nice um, pattern to use for this skein of yarn because you only need 50, you only need 50 grams and that's what I have. So once I'm finished with my ribbed socks, I'm gonna cast on ribbed tights in this yarn. That is all I have for knitting and yarn related things this time. Um, I have a lot of sewing that I've been doing and I'm not actually going to show you all of it because some of it is in various stages of laundry and etc. But um, I will show you a picture of the dress that I wore at the wedding I was talking about earlier. I made this pattern from Vogue. This is very easy Vogue V9251. And it has two versions, uh, shorter length and full length with um, either regular sleeves, like I don't know what, the, what kind of sleeves you would call this, or a flutter sleeve. Can see the line drawing there so I actually did the full length version with the flutter sleeve and this is the third time that I have sewn this particular pattern the first version I made as kind of a twall um, turned out to be pretty wearable so actually it's almost exactly this color and I specifically made it in it was a viscose fabric it is it's still exists. Uh, this goes fabric and I made it because I wanted to make a full length version in a dark green color which was very similar to this color. I made it for a wedding we went to last September in Spain. I decided to make the twill in the same viscose um, but I bought a little bit less of it so I made the shorter version but the main part that I needed to fit was the bodice. So that's what I did and um, actually that version had the regular sleeves, not the flutter sleeves, and it was the shorter version. But I, I finished that one after I finished the real one or whatever you would say, the green version. So I just fitted the bodice and then I attached the skirt and I never got around to finishing off the hem because it's a really long hem. So I kind of skipped that part on my test version did the green full length one, finished that off, and then for um, Thomas's graduation party that we had at the end of May this year, even though he graduated a while ago, he, I mean even though he was finished with school a while ago, he only went to the graduation ceremony this May, and we also had a little party for him at our apartment this May, and I wore that pink shorter one um, at that time. That was super long winded. Uh, the point is, was really, mm, I was really happy that I had made this dress previously because that made it really simple to make some maternity adjustments for this dress so that I was able to make it really quickly for the wedding we went to this past weekend. And I made it in a floral viscose. I'll show you some pictures of it here. I bought this fabric at Minerva Crafts. I believe I bought four meters and I used pretty much all of it. I have a little bit left over, I think, but I don't even remember if it was enough to save. Um, so basically the adjustments that I made were, it was easy to decide what adjustments I would make because I had the green full length version that I had previously made. So I was able to try that on while I was quite, I mean, while I already had a bit of a pregnancy bump. Um, I think I tried it on maybe two weeks ago and then I made it right then so that then 
this past weekend it would be approximately the right size and I was able to test it out and see what modifications I needed to make because I had already sewn it up so all I did was to the front skirts I added about two inches or five centimeters on either of the front skirt pieces and then the bodice is also a wrap bodice it crosses over in the front and so where the tie is on either side so like the bodice is kind of like a triangle like this so rather than on the side seam which is where I adjusted the skirt with over on this pointier side I just extended that also the same two inches five centimeters so that the waist seam would be the same length as the skirt waist seam the top seam of the skirt um, that worked really well and I decided on that distance or that length that I wanted to increase it by trying on the original one that I made and just estimating how much I needed to add I also did end up after I had sewn it up, I did end up um, raising the waist a little bit so that it sat more above my stomach rather than in an awkward kind of middle place so that I wanted it to sit basically right under my boobs. Um, and I just did that after I had sewn it up. I kind of pinched out the fabric that I needed to get rid of and stitched across there so that wasn't maybe like the most official way that you should do that but it worked out really well it was super hot on the wedding day and I was really glad to have a nice flowy dress and um, I think it fit the occasion really well now I'll show you a couple of other things that I have been making I have been obsessed with sewing baby clothes so just to warn you the, the nice thing about baby clothes is that they take up very little fabric so if you buy a half a meter of a jersey fabric or yeah three quarters of a meter well with half a meter you can make probably a pair of leggings a onesie and maybe a little headband or a hat or something else um so i had various amounts of each of these fabrics which i'm about to show you and with some mixing and matching I just spent I just went on like a cutting spree one day of our vacation and um, then spent the rest of the week or a couple of days sewing these up which was really fun so we are having a December baby so these are some little Christmas leggings this is a pattern from Brindle and Twig <laughs> excuse me <clears throat> this is the drawstring leggings pattern from Brindle and Twig. I just omit the drawstring because I think that this band up at the top is stretchy enough and I just don't really want to deal with both putting in a drawstring and then having a drawstring with a baby. Seems like unnecessary. Um, yeah, so I these ones are newborn size. I didn't make that many newborn things. Um, the sizes are newborn 0 to 3 months, and 3 to 6 months, and then it goes up from there up to like 40, I think. And I've made mostly 0 to 3 or 3 to 6 months, but a few newborn. This is one of my favorite fabrics that I have from Stuff and Steel. These little eyelashes, and I ha you'll see that come up again. So I'll just go through these kind of quickly. That's the same pattern. I have the same in this little light blue so I've made seven pairs of leggings total we have this adorable little acorn mushroom fabric and for some of these I've used the same jersey fabric for the cuffs and for the waistband but for this one I used actually I actually used a ribbing uh, fabric but it works both ways and then this is a, a bit of a bigger pair and this is just the legging pattern from Brindle and Twig, regular leggings. And we have some little stripes also in that, and then a little kind of light pink. 
Then I have onesies galore. We have this little onesie. There's this one, which is that same kind of light pink, and I did the binding with a uh, white rib. This one, which is long sleeve in that eyelash fabric. This is also long sleeve, matches the little leggings. Here we have a long sleeve version of the acorns. Oh, this is one of my favorite ones for sure. Little stripes, and then this gorgeous fabric for the sleeves. That's one of my favorite fabrics, so I had bought a full meter of that, and I've used it for the sleeves of this onesie. Then I made a full uh, short sleeve onesie with it. I've also saved um, a big portion of it for making a... Um, like a jersey blanket, which will I uh, will have two layers of jersey and then bind it with a jersey bias binding. And then I also made this, which is the cutest. This is also a brindle and twig pattern. The onesie is as well. I think it's onesie, maybe it's pattern number nine or something. It's you'll, you'll see it on their on their page if you're looking for it. This is a footy pajama pattern from them as well. I think this one, if I remember, is called number 43. So it has little feet, has this band with snaps all the way up it, and little cuffs. So this one might be my favorite. I have also made the footy pattern in the the sleepy eyes eyelashes but this one doesn't have any snaps on it yet because I ran out of snaps so that's not quite finished and then I also did it in this fabric which it has most of the snaps but not all of them there are those projects I have a couple more um, I think it was on Monday last week that I cut out 24 projects. On Tuesday I cut out two more and then as of yesterday I had sewn up 20, yesterday was Sunday, I had sewn up 20 out of the 26 projects that I had cut out so that was very satisfying and um, yeah. I have some more planned but I'm gonna take a little bit of a break from them for a little while and um, so something else. I am planning on making a little pick-me-up carrier, which is from Sew Toots Patterns. I made one for my friend um, back in last summer when she had her baby in September. I don't know if I showed it on the podcast. I think I did. So I'm planning on making that same pattern again. And my carrier will be with this uh, green twill fabric as the straps and like the main structure fabric is this green twill and then the co the color for the the actual carrier part the front part is going to be this floral I think those look nice together that might be next um, We'll see. That I remember that being quite an intense project, um, mostly because the foam for the straps was super difficult to get in, um, and you were sewing like it was it was quite a wrestling project because you were sewing through thick foam, and you were sewing on these like webbing straps, and yeah, it just I remember my hands being quite sore from it. So I might wait a little on that one until the temperature cools down outside and in our apartment because I am basically sweating sitting still so I'm not sure that I want to tackle that kind of project at the moment. I have one other sewing finished project that I wanted to share with you today which I'm very proud of. Um, 
This is the Hampton Jean Jacket, which is a pattern by Alina Designs or something close to that. If you Google Alina, uh, Hampton Jean Jacket, you will be able to find it. And I sewed this a couple of weeks ago, maybe months ago now, I don't remember exactly. And I really like it. Um, I made this in some stash denim that I had that I bought years ago uh, when I decided I wanted to make jeans. This is cone mill denim from the US and I think that since then the mill has actually shut down which is a real shame. Um, so I had this denim and I thought, oh, okay, I just have to make a jacket out of it instead of jeans. Because jeans, I don't know, they wear out in a different way than jackets do, at least for me. So I thought with a, je with a denim jacket, they only improve with wear, whereas jeans sometimes just get to the point that they're worn out. Um, so this actually is a stretch denim, even though this pattern is written for uh, non-stretch denim. It worked well um, for me. So here we have my jacket. And yeah, I have the sleeves cuffed up once right now. Um, the pockets have this striped fabric. They're welted pockets. Uh, welt pockets? Welted? I don't know. And I have brass buttons and orange top stitching. Let me tell you, top stitching is so much fun. There's almost nothing better than a good top stitch. Um, yeah. I did make a muslin for this in some just woven, sort of heavier weight muslin fabric. Uh, in hindsight, it probably would have made most sense to make the muslin in a bit of a stretch fabric, but I didn't do that. And when I was trying on my muslin, I kept in mind that I would be I would have the garment in a stretch gar in a stretch fabric. So in areas that were a little bit too tight, like across my shoulders on the back, I um, did a broad back upper broad back adjustment, broad upper back adjustment. But I did slightly less than I would have if it was a woven fabric, um, just keeping in mind that it was a stretch denim. And that was good for, like that worked out really well. So it has a good fit across the back, I think. And yeah, um, I don't think that there were any other adjustments that I made really. The pattern is really well written. I did, uh, what's it called? Feld, full, ugh, I don't know, full felt seams. I think that's what it's called when you like cut part of the seam allowance off, tuck the other seam allowance over it, and then top stitch so that you get all these nicely enclosed seams. So I did that as much as possible. I didn't do it on the um, pocket, as you can see, and then obviously not on this pocket either. But all the other seams are done in that way so if that makes any sense at all so that all the raw edges are enclosed and that's kind of a traditional way to finish off a jacket a jean jacket i have the pocket stripe fabric there up for the little hook also anyway i just thought i'd share that because i have made it in the last couple months and it's definitely one of my makes that I'm most proud of or just really get a lot of use out of the finished garment and because it's an outerwear piece it becomes sometimes more of an everyday, uh, everyday piece that I'm wearing instead of a shirt or a dress that I might make that gets worn once a week or every other week or something like that. It's been way too hot to wear it now but it was really nice uh, during the transition from spring to summer 
and we had a couple of cooler weeks in the summer and I wore it a lot on our trip when we went to the west coast so that was uh it's a really good staple to have in my wardrobe and I didn't have a jean jacket before so I was really looking to fill a gap in my wardrobe um, so I'm really happy with that one I did want to bring up a last point um which is last but certainly not least and I I have of course been following this conversation regarding racism and yeah hatred against certain members of the knitting community and especially as it relates to recent events at a yarn event um, in the UK Yarningham? I don't, I don't remember the name exactly I've never been there I have not I don't follow the person who was, who has basically, yeah, made very horrible comments and threats to people at the event. I just want to say here that I do not condone any of the behavior that he has displayed in the recent weeks and that it's really sad to me that this type of behavior still happens but it also reminds me that even though I often talk about in other knitting podcasters or sewing podcasters also talk about how great the knitting and sewing community are which is true I think there are elements of that um People are often supportive and there is a good community feeling in general but that is it reminds me that that community is still made up of all the people who live I mean it's made up of just people and people sometimes aren't good and have racist thoughts and do racist actions and I know that myself I have a lot of learning to do in terms of what my white privilege means and how I can better support people of color in this knitting community and in general while it's sad to me and it disturbs me that somebody who is a knitter can say horrible things and be really racist and just, yeah, horrible. At the same time, it doesn't surprise me and it reminds me that even though we like to think of the knitting community as this beautiful safe place, that it's not the case for everyone and that people still have these opinions. And I don't really know where to go from there uh, except to say that I am working on learning for myself and learning more ways that I can be inclusive to people who are otherwise marginalized uh, so yeah I really wish it didn't have to be like that but it is and there's no it's frustrating, it's equally frustrating to me to see people who are denying this pain that people are going through and asking to just go back to knitting and that kind of thing. I don't think that it's appropriate to say that kind of thing when people are really hurting from the actions of others. Uh, that's one of the reasons that I have put a statement out that I, I support Ravelry and their decisions to ban any Trump-related um, support from their site because it's often... It, yeah, because it is connected to his hate speech and that's not something that Ravelry wants to support and I agree with them. But it's not just about Ravelry, it's also about supporting other people um, it's not just about Ravelry and the anti-Trump 
statement that they put out. It's also about supporting the people of color in our community. There I go again, our community. But it is still and will continue to be and I hope we can make it a stronger one that's more inclusive at the end of this. So I'll leave you with that. Um, I hope you all are enjoying some knitting and sewing and I hope to talk to you again soon. Bye.